All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started then today. So welcome everyone to today's webinar, Whole School, Whole Community, Whole Child, WISC Model Implementation in Elementary Schools through a County Health Department, presented by Charlie Daniel and Bridget Par Para. I didn't ask what your last name. That's correct. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> So if you aren't familiar with the American School Health Associ Association, the mis mission of ASHA, or ASHA as some people call it, is to transform all schools into places where every student learns and thrives. ASHA envisions healthy students who learn and achieve in safe and healthy environments, nurtured by caring adults, functioning within coordinated school and community support systems. And just a quick brief explanation of some of our member benefits. Um, our Journal of School Health is our peer-reviewed index professional journal. As a member, you get access to all the issues and articles online. Um, you also receive free continuing education credits. So for today's webinar, you would get those credits for free. We also have journal self-studies available online so you could read past articles take quizzes and earn credits for those. Um, we do offer a few discounts from American Academy of Pediatrics publications, as well as a discount to the Sex Ed Network. And then we just had our virtual conference. So um, members receive discounted rates to virtual conference as well as free continuing ed. And just our network of experts and uh, information we have. It's really a great community to join. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters today. Hello, everyone. My name is Bridget Para, and I am here today with Charlie Daniel, and we are going to be having some fun with you guys. So as we start, if you will, if you would be so inclined to turn on your webcam, just so we can see all of your faces, um, the webcam, if you are not familiar, I'm sure most people are, but if you're not in the lower left-hand corner, you can turn that camera on. Um, and then we are also going to ask you to introduce yourself in the chat. We just like to know who is with us today and where you guys are from. So if you'll give us your name and where you are from. And we'll give you a few seconds to add that into the chat. Again, the chat is in the lower part of your screen in the middle of your screen. So I see we have Mary Miller. We have Deidre Smith, Hannah from Wisconsin, uh, Catherine. Oh my gosh, here they all come. Here they all come. We have Arkansas, we have Ohio, we have Western Kentucky, Albuquerque. Thank you guys. We love to see who is with us. It looks like we have people from all over. So this is really exciting for us. So as we go throughout this presentation, um, also if you want to interact with us, you can use the reaction button that is also at the bottom of your screen on more of the right side. Um, you can, if you enjoy what we're saying, give us a thumbs up or if you wanna celebrate with us, celebrate with us. So uh, just be familiar with those as well. Oh, we have some OKC. Hello, nice to see you guys. Um, so in the chat for our next thing, we are going to ask that you let us know what do these images below represent to you? So look at these images. What do they represent? Tell us in the chat. Oh, we have Japan. Okay, good to see you as well. All right, community, yes, thank you. That is what we are going to be talking about today and all of these um, images represent just that, community. And we're gonna talk about how that community can look more like a collaborative effort. Hello, I'm Charlie Daniel, the It's All About Kids School Health Manager. Um, it's All About Kids is a school health program of the Tulsa Health Department, which aligns with the whole school, whole community, whole child model. As you can see, our team consists of six health education and promotion specialists, one part-time nurse consultant. Um, we're going to be showing you in a little bit. She also likes to dress up in character. She has lots of different voices, so she is multi-talented. Um, and then we have a supervisor, which is Bridget Parra and a manager. The mission of the It's All About Kids program is to improve the overall health and academic achievement of Tulsa County school-aged children in collaboration with students, schools, and the community by aligning learning and health through comprehensive nutrition and health education. 
Last year, during the year of COVID, we had 55 partnering schools in Tulsa County within eight different school districts. For this upcoming year, we currently have 50 partnering schools in those eight districts. Um, later, we're gonna be discussing the process for how a school can partner with us. Um, so that'll be coming. Just so you know, our program does offer resources and education in all areas of the WIS model, which can be found on our website, tulsaplay.org. So please, when you have time, check out our website so you can see all the free resources that we offer to our community partners and to our schools. Our presentation today, we're going to be introducing strategies for schools to connect with community partners to support support the implementation of the WIS model. We're gonna be sharing some examples of how we have partnered with schools and how uh, we have collaborated with other community partners in our areas to help meet the needs of our schools. We hope that you leave today with new ideas for potential community partners in your area. As you can see, we're gonna be discussing how to access the priority components of the WIS model in your schools. We have learned that over the years when a school is adopting the WIS model, it can be really overwhelming when they try to take on all 10 components. So we have them choose three. We'll be talking about that process as well. Um, we'll also be sharing ways to identify and commu uh, build community partners within your community that can assist with the implementation of the WIS model. So we have all heard of the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. So meaning that everyone in that village has a part in raising a child in a healthy and safe environment. So the same is true for schools. Think about it as it takes a community to raise a school, meaning that all of us in the community have a part in making sure we raise up our schools to be safe and healthy environments. So as we move forward with this presentation, keep this in mind. So what we're gonna do is we would like you to participate real quickly with us. At the top of your screen, you should see a lime green bar. And um, at the end of that, you should see something that says view options. If you will select that and then select the annotate option, that will give you a bar of different things that you can use. So you should see text, draw, stamp. We are gonna have you select the stamp option. And then we want you to stamp along the continuum bar that where you are, do you currently collaborate with community partners? We're either gonna be at not yet, so down at one or that we're already there. And if you do not have access to this annotate option, please feel free to put it in the chat based on the numbers on the screen. Give you guys a few seconds. We see a lot of people. I see some in our chat. We have a four, we have another four, okay. We have a five. And it looks like for the most part here, we are majority of us that are participating um, are around that four to five range. Um, so may have a lot of experience in collaborating with partners. And um, we have a few in the middle that maybe you still, you've been doing it, but you're still like working on it. And then we have um, a few that maybe are not there yet. And that's completely fine. And that's what we're here to talk about today to hopefully get give some give some advice on how to do that. All right, if you guys wouldn't mind with that annotate feature, just closing out the red uh, X circle, then we won't have more drawings and I'm gonna go ahead and clear them all out. Okay, so why are community partnerships important? So the outside yellow gold ring of the WISC model reflects the importance of support from and partnerships with the community. We should always remember that schools are a part of our community. Um, the WIST model was not designed with the idea that schools would adopt and implement it on their own. Schools may have limited resources to meet the wide array of needs of students and their families. So par partnerships and collaboration with community agencies are essential to helping schools secure the resources and support necessary to implement the WISC model. So let's look at three areas. Let's start with resources. So resources can be anything from providing a, a safe space to offer programming. Um, you know, you might not have a space on your school site to do something, but you may have a community partner that has a space and they're willing to lend it to you for programming. 
um, materials uh, needed for programming. Also reaching out to your community partners. They may have those materials that you need and are more than willing to work with you in a partnership to provide that. And then there's also cash or in-kind donations. Um, you may be thinking this would be a great program for our school, but we just don't have the budget for it right now. So you may have a community partner that can provide that for you. So then that leads us into support. Support can be possibly providing staff or volunteers. I know with our program, we provide education in schools, but we have staff that go in and actually provide that. And so we're giving that staff to do that. Um, and when they have events, we, we will go and volunteer if they ask us to help out. Um, then we also can look at support being in curriculum. You know, again, maybe there's a curriculum your school wants to try with something. And again, maybe there's, you don't have that, but we, I, for our program, we have a lot of curriculums and we are more than happy to share that with our schools if they need it. Um, and then finally, just having access to the resources that we talked about above. And then we are there. We are there to achieve the goal of implementing the WISC component areas. And so schools are such a great place to implement this because it's the best place to reach our children and youth to provide health services and programs. So now we want to hear from you again. We're going to use the annotate feature. So I'm going to go over the instructions just in case you forgot. At the top middle of your screen, you're going to see that bright green bar. You may have to hover over it to be able to see it. You're going to choose view options at the end of it. Click the view options, scroll down to annotate, and then you're going to see um, a bar pop up and you can select the stamp option or you can draw it on there if that's what you want to do today, uh, whatever you prefer. And then we want you to look at this and stamp in the component area, which your school or district may need more focus. Um, so as we go through this presentation today, we want you to really focus on that area and maybe thinking of commun other community partners that could come in and assist with this. So I'm gonna give a little bit of time for you guys to select that priority area that you really want to focus on this school year. And if you don't have access to that annotate tool again in the, in the chat, please just put the component that you wanna focus on. Yeah, so looking at this, we are all over the board. We need help in all areas of the 10 components. Um, hopefully today you guys are going to get some different ideas from us. We're also going to ask you to share out some different ideas with the team. Um, I say the team being everybody on with us today. Feel free to share some of your community partners in the chat. We want this to be a discussion. I think we can all learn from each other. So as Bridget and I are talking and sharing ideas, if ideas pop in your head or you want to share something, please feel free to do that in the chat. Um, or if you would like to be unmuted to share an opportunity, you can raise your hand and we can call on you to, to actually speak out to the group. We're gonna have some different, different opportunities for that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and if you guys wouldn't mind Xing out of the annotate feature again. So we're not working all over the slides and I'm going to clear the screen. I did see in the chat that we had someone say physical activity and physical education. Okay, so we are going to talk to you about how we as a county health department are able to partner with schools in our community. And so to do that, we're gonna take you to our website, which is tulsaplay.org. This is where we have a bunch of our resources and it's kind of a hub for our schools and teachers. And so as you'll see on the front page, we have a lot of ways for them to connect with us through social media. Um, we have a new YouTube channel, which I'm sure everyone has experienced with COVID. We had to create virtual lessons. Um, and so that has been new for us. And then we always try to share news and events of trainings or things that are going on that are related to schools. So um, we have that. And then we also have testimonials from our teachers and our schools that we like to share. So for partnership with us, we have our schools in Tulsa County, we require a memorandum of understanding um, to be a partner. And so our school districts will fill that out just to make sure that we know that we are approved to go into their school and provide the health education that, we're, that we have and that they know that we are coming. 
Um, and then once we have that, we have them come to our website to fill out our assessment. Our assessment is available April 1st to September 1st each year. And the school, once they've completed that, then we meet with them. So the first part is looking at our WISC components and IAK topics list. And um, that just lets them know we've broken down our topics by WISC component. So you will see here everything that we offer within each component. The red is our new virtual lessons, which again, we got to create last year. So we're excited about that. Um, but we also have all of these in person as well. And some of our topics like counseling, psychological and social services, or physical environment, some of those are handled greatly by the schools. And if they need something, we're there to support. But um, for those, we primarily provide resources. So once they have, we ask that they choose three component areas to focus on. We have found that it is overwhelming to try to implement all 10, um, not just for our schools, but for us as well. And so we found that three is a good number. And um, so they will choose three of the topics that they want. So for example, if they choose social and emotional climate, they can also choose, okay, they don't have to do all the topics here. Maybe they just wanna do classroom cohesion and that is what we schedule with them for the year. So once they have decided on their three areas that they would like, we also on our page have available, we make available a PDF version of our assessment so they can collect any data. Our state requires data um, for certain things. And so um, we, we have them fill that out and it shows them what we're gonna be asking for data wise. And then once they've done that, they can complete it on our, our link here. And then we receive it, one of our health education and promotion specialists who is assigned to that specific district will reach out to that school and set up a meeting. And we go in, we schedule for the year, all of the topics that we're going to do or any events that we might be doing. Um, if there's something that we are not able to provide, we are always more than welcome to share resources um, or connect them with another partner in the community that may be able to do something with them that we are not able to provide. So that is kind of how schools work with us and how we become partners with them. I want to mention too that we do, our program does require a MOU or a memorandum of understanding with each of the districts, but this is kind of a common practice among all of our school districts in Tulsa County. So any partner that goes into these schools, they're requesting that MOU with um, the other partners as well. All right. So we're going to be going over um, some of the different components and how we've partnered with, you know, different agencies around Tulsa County, um, and then talk about some of the program that we offer whenever we're going into the schools. So we have had the opportunity to partner with different universities in Tulsa to help us expand on the health education that's being offered in our schools. We're excited to announce that Oklahoma finally has a health education mandate. Um, this has not happened until this last year. And so we were the ones coming in and doing health education. Our teachers weren't providing it unless they felt a need to do that. So um, now we're all getting on the same page and, and they're looking to us for that expertise in health education. Um, whenever we partnered with the, the OSU health promotion students to do our do some health education, we saw this as a win-win. Their professor said, you know, this is awesome that our college students are actually gaining real world experience. And then our youth are receiving the health education, which I had said that they weren't getting before. Um, health promotion students, they created and taught classroom-based health education health education classes, and they also had the opportunity to develop some assemblies, which you're seeing pictured here. Um, the first assembly that was, it was a kickoff event for the Tulsa Health Department, Don't Bug Me Flu Prevention Campaign. Um, they were actually able to do this in three different schools for that kickoff event. Um, whenever the students were creating this assembly, they broke out into different groups. They filmed their, or they developed their own assembly and then they pitched it to our staff and they said, what do you, which one do you like? That's gonna be the winner. And so actually we took little pieces from all of the presentations that we really liked and they formed the overall presentation. And all of the students, even if they weren't, you know, the main characters, 
all the OSU students um, went out to facilitate these classes. And as you can imagine, being a student that's never been in a classroom teaching students, going into an assembly, you're a little overwhelmed um, seeing all of these students. So they did a great job and we continue to partner with them throughout the years. Um, the next school year, the students, they wanted to do a little bit, some, something a little bit different. And so they did a dental health presentation for the early childhood centers, which again was awesome. That's not typically a group of students that we reach. Our program focuses on elementary school, uh, school. So them presenting this dental health to our early childhood centers was a, also a win-win. Um, as you can see in that lower picture, this is our staff out teaching our dental health education. We, we offer dental health kindergarten through fifth grade. Uh, our fourth grade is the, the lesson that we do for an hour and we pre and post them to pre and post test them to see if they're learning the information that we're teaching them. Um, this lesson is always fun because we get to use those red disclosing tablets. I don't know if you guys got to do that when you were in school, but it is very eye opening, um, especially for the kids. It shows them where the plaque is stuck on their teeth um, and where they might be missing whenever they're brushing their teeth. So, the, you know, they're all smiles. They put the red on their teeth and they have these big peak smiles and you're like, oh, oh, goodness. Well, some of us we really do need this lesson. And so then we tell them like, if you see bright pink, that's where plaque is stuck. Um, so then we, we brush our teeth for two minutes and then they get to look in a mirror and see, did they actually get that pink off their teeth? And if they didn't, we remind them, if you continually miss these, these spots, that's what can cause cavities. Um, so again, our lessons that we do with this, we do a pre and post test and our data has always showed that the, the kids have been learning the information. We have statistically significant um, in our data scores that they are learning the information. So that's good. Charlie, we do have a question in the chat, looks like from Lenny and asking, um, are these students, are these college students, future professionals in health and physical education? So most of the students are OSU health promotion students. So they're going into either health promotion, community ed. Um, some of them will, will go on to do, you know, nursing um, or other things too. Okay, so our next component is the physical education and physical activity component. So we have a lesson, if you see in the top left corner there, we have a lesson called fitness in the classroom. We, um, love to bring movement into the classroom and connect it with core curriculum. And so in this picture, kiddos are getting to flank there. We show them how to plank and hold themselves up. And then we have them counting by twos or by threes. Um, so we're just adding simple movements and adding those concepts in. And this is a favorite amongst um, our teachers. Um, and the students, they always love to challenge each other. They'll challenge us, you know, see who can hold it the longest. Um, or if it's squats, whatever move we're doing, they they end up loving it. Um, the middle on the top is one of our schools needed to borrow equipment. So we, we often will be asked by schools that are partnering with us and also just schools in the community that may need um, to borrow equipment. And we know that everyone's budgets are different. And so we are more than happy to provide that equipment. That is a nine square in the air, um, which is a pretty expensive piece of equipment. But we um, are happy to take it to our schools and let them use it. This was in a PE class and he decided to do a unit using the nine square in the air. And so his students got to have fun and experience that. In the top right, we do a lesson called team building. Um, we do it a lot in the PE class. If the weather is nice, Oklahoma, our weather is always, you know, crazy. Um, but if we get a day in there that we can use, we will, we can also take the students outside. Um, they learn about what it is to be on a team, the characteristics of being a team and why it's important, not only, you know, in school, but at home and then later in life. And so they, we have them going through that lesson, and then they actually get to do activities where they have to work as a team to get something completed. The bottom left corner is students from one of the high schools here and OSU medical students. The OSU medical students were wanting to help the health teacher at this particular school um, teach health and help students to really understand 
the parts of their body, how their bodies function, why is it important? Um, obviously, they, these are future doctors. Um, they also wanted the students to be able to see you can be a doctor and here's how you can do it and make those connections. Um, and so this was a great opportunity for us to work with them. We brought some of what we call action-based learning techniques in and they work with those students to go over medical concepts and health concepts. And then the lower middle is an action-based learning lab um, that has been created by Jean Moyes. And we have, our staff has gone through that training and we are able to help partner with schools. We actually have a pilot project where we have schools that we help purchase equipment um, for and we get data from them um, on reading and math scores. So students are being able to go to this action-based learning lab, do um, the, go through the stations where you can see developmental gaps. Um, it's based on brain science. And students, again, are bringing in that movement and core curriculum. And then they are able to go right after that to a reading block or a math block. And we kind of compare to see how their scores do based off of that. Um, and a lot of times we'll see an improvement of that, just getting that brain activated and working. And then finally, in the lower right, um, we have a program that one of our health education and promotion specialists has created called It's All About Kinesthetics. And it's a functional fitness um, class. She actually um, is participates in CrossFit. So this is a passion for her. And so um, she, she realized that sports were not necessarily always her thing, but she didn't mind being physically active. So she's created a program where kids learn how to have physical fitness in their life and how to work it in and why it's important for our body functions. And they get a health education lesson during that about all their, like their body systems. And so in this picture, she is actually doing a um, assessment, a physical assessment so that they can see when they started, they may only have been able to run two laps, but by the end, hopefully they're maybe able to run five, but it's all about making personal goals for themselves. Um, they're not in competition with anyone else. It's just seeing how they can improve th throughout the program. All right, so now to talk about the nutrition environment and services. Again, like I had said, we had partnered with um, OSU, the health promotion students. And so this is them do teaching about sugar content with drinks during the sh sugar sweet and drink beverage lesson. Um, they're teaching that again to the early childhood education or early childhood centers. Um, the bottom left is a picture of our blender bikes, which is always a huge hit. And we use these blender bikes in multiple different ways um, to teach individual nutrition classes, nutrition and physical activity classes. We do assembly style um, nutrition classes in PE where all the kids get to rotate through. We've taken them to our parent events, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And we've also used them at community events. As you can see, like they are brightly colored and people are always in awe, like what does that actually do? Um, when we go into the, the classrooms or into the, the special setting, we usually do smoothies. That was the first thing that we tried with our students and we made um, smoothies that had spinach in them, which when we've done that, it kind of turns like a brown color and the kids are like, oh, I don't know if I want to try that, but, but they always do. Um, they taste just like the regular smoothies, but recently we stopped putting the, the spinach in there just so they would be that bright pink color. Um, we partner with the child nutrition departments at each of the school districts that we go into and they provide the food. Um, and when we pair it with a, a parent night, then those, we get to do it at the school. And then the, the same food is used for the parent night um, too. So the funding all stays within that same night. So the kids third through fifth grade, they get to ride the blender bike. They get to try it out. They actually get to blend it up, which they realize is not an easy task. Um, and while they're, they're blending it, they get to see it mixing up and then they all get to taste it. So even our kindergarten and second grade classes, we usually get the teachers up there and they cheer them on while they're blending it. And then the students get to try the smoothie. Um, while they're trying the smoothie, we give them a handout. And on that handout, it gives fun facts about dairy, if that's the lesson that we're doing that day. Um, or we've done some protein at one of our school districts. They wanted to try to do hummus, which worked out well. Um, 
obviously the smoothie, the kids really like it because of the sweet flavors, but they were willing to try the hummus at our other district. So that handout has protein on it. And then on the back of it, the older kids, they get to do a crossword puzzle. So if it's protein, it's different, you know, vocabulary words to do with protein, dairy, different uh, vocabulary words to do with dairy. Um, the younger kids, we have an empty smoothie container and they get to draw in what they would want to put in their smoothie, which is always very entertaining to see what kids think that they really want to put in their smoothie. Some of them are doing pizza smoothies, hamburger smoothies. We're like, okay, well, I mean, you get to be creative. If that's what you want to try, then we can do that. So again, those, the blender bikes have always been a huge hit. Um, at our schools. And we've also had two other school district or two of our school districts, they've purchased blender bikes through our tobacco settlement endowment trust grant funding. Um, so, you know, it was such a big hit that they were like, we need to have these actually at our schools and be able to use them more often. So when we partner with those schools, we have three blender bikes that the kids get to try out. Um, the bottom right picture is when we're teaching nutrition in the PE class, if we're not using our blender bikes, this is where the kids are learning about the importance of reading a food label and how it's important for us to make sure that we are getting a well-balanced meal and you're choosing foods from all five food groups. So their team, they're trying to get bean bags that have all different, all five food groups in them to take back to their team to build this healthy meal. Um, the top right picture. That is a picture from our cooking club. So cooking club is an after school program that we offer to our schools. And um, we're teaching the, the students the importance of, you know, helping to help the importance of helping out in the kitchen, teaching them those skills that they might need that parents you know, maybe don't have the time to teach them or maybe the patience to teach them. Um, this is a six week course and we offer it twice in one semester, which that allows us to see if about see up to 32 students each semester at that specific school. Um, we've had churches, grocery stores, convenience stores donate the funds to support this program. Our, it's all about kids program. We pay for the materials, but as far as the food goes, we need we, we, we're not, not able to purchase food. And so the schools, that's their responsibility. It costs about $250 for both of those sessions. Um, and so, like I said, churches, grocery store, convenience stores, they've donated either a gift card or they've donated the, the, the food supplies. Um, yeah. I see in the chat, um, I think it was from our physical, when we were talking about physical education, it says Ruth said that the Daily Mile from the UK is a program that they are working on in LA. So thank you for sharing that um, resource, Ruth. That's something that we should definitely take a look at. Um, so our next component is going to be social and emotional climate. Um, and so our top left picture on this slide is with um, the Tulsa Drillers, which is a local minor league baseball team, and their mascot is a bull. And so we have partnered with them to provide what we call a bully busters assembly for our K through second grade students. And um, he, when he comes and he works with one of our health education and promotion specialists during this presentation, and they go through the steps to become a bully buster. And so the students are interactive the whole time. Um, we have them getting up, we have them sitting down, um, they take the Bully Busters pledge at the end. So it's a really um, great partnership that we have. They also will typically leave bookmarks for all the kids. Um, they have left tickets to a game so the kids can go to a game with their family. Um, we also have collaborated with them on a Bully Busters day or I mean, an anti-bullying day um, and in our community. And so we go to the Driller Stadium, schools are invited, they bring their students to the stadium that day. We have collaboration with other um, entities here in Tulsa that are also bringing awareness to bullying um, issues. And we all work together and have a day about anti-bullying and how to stand up for each other and to get rid of bullying in our community. And so that's always a fun day for us. Um, we also, um, on the top right corner, there are kiddos in what we call turtle shells. They rock back and forth, they spin, 
Um, again, we are partnering with a school that has action-based learning. We will provide this equipment to them. And this is kind of an area for them to calm themselves. Um, and so they're allowed to get in these rockers and you can see they're reading, they're doing the assignment that their teacher has given them, but they're, they're able to have this time in this alternative seating just to relax and be calm. Um, the bottom left picture is one of our OSU interns. Um, when an intern comes to work with us, they get to experience what it is like being a part of our program. So that means um, developing lesson plans, and that means teaching lessons. Um, so in this particular picture, this student is teaching our star story from our mindfulness lesson. And we talk to kids in this lesson about how to take things out of our heart that might be causing us sadness or anger or um, frustration and replace that with love and joy. And we talk about what those emotions mean. And if we have those things going on, um, who can we talk to about that? So that's always a fun lesson to do with our students. And then the bottom right is a kiddo. Um, he is working on his puzzle piece. We have a, a lesson called Classroom Cohesion and they are working together as a class. What does it mean to be together as a class? And um, every, every person in this class is important. And everybody in this class is unique and brings something special. And so they get to create a puzzle piece of what is unique about them that they are bringing to this class. Then they all get to put the puzzle together and then they, we leave it with them and their teacher can put it up on the wall. And then they can just always have it as a reminder of like, we are a class, we are a team in this class and everybody is important. So that's always a fun lesson for us as well. All right, so employee wellness. Um, we actually use the MoveSpring. Um, MoveSpring is a platform that we use to track our employee wellness program. Uh, Bridget had the opportunity to go to the American Public Health Conference um, a few years ago, and she was able to use this app and she came back super excited about it and wanted to try it. She thought this would be a great way to engage our teachers and a, a way for us to actually track to see if they're making any progress. So MoveSpring is um, the platform that we're currently using and they're adding and evolving every year. So this year they've added habit challenges um, along with step challenges. Plus we're doing some nutrition information. We're doing some nutrition um, stuff with that as well. So as you can see in this first picture, it's one of our challenge winners. She was getting, we gave her since she won the step challenge, she got dumbbells. Um, just to help promote, you know, if she wants to do something besides walking or maybe do some dumbbells when she's walking, she can. Um, but we try to make all of our prizes relate with something, you know, to do with uh, physical activity or fitness. Um, this year, like I said, we're going to be doing some more nutrition stuff as well. Um, for employee wellness, we also do professional developments. Um, this is something that has been new to our program the last few years, but it's something that our schools really want and they, they ask for it over and over. Um, one of the fun presentations that we do is our team building or classroom cohesion. We model this with the teachers at the beginning of the year, teaching them different activities um, that they can do together. They get to know each other, but every activity we're teaching them, then they can take that back to their classroom and build that classroom cohesion within their class. Sometimes after we've done professional developments, we'll actually go into the classrooms and do some of these activities with the students too, to again, model with this, the teachers. If kids are moving in the classroom, that's okay. It, it's actually creating a better environment for them. They're happy, they're fun, they're learning, um, and they're getting to know each other. The middle picture is when we're doing one of our action-based learning trainings for our teachers. Again, it's bringing that movement into the classroom. Um, this activity is called Gotcha. I don't know if you've ever done it before, but I can tell you that whenever we talk about Gotcha or, or do it in a training, instantly the room changes. There is so much laughter. There is smiles on people's faces, the people that were looking at us like, oh goodness, what are they going to present today? They are now in a good mood and having fun. So this is one of those activities that we like to lead um, with our teachers, but then we've also done it with the students and it's so funny just to see them laugh and smile. Um, it always puts me in a better mood too when, when we see that. 
The picture on the right top, that's when we're doing one of our team building activities. Again, this can be done in the gym. This could be done outside. So if a class is able to go outside um, and borrow some hula hoops, since we have tons of hula hoops in our program, and most PE teachers have hula hoops as well, they can do some of these activities. And this is where they're trying to build hula huts. And as you can see, these teachers are very proud of themselves for building this really tall hula hut. Um, and then you don't see it in this picture, but they have to move the hula hut to the other end of the, the playing field without it falling over. Um, again, like just seeing the reactions on their face whenever they're looking at this makes you smile and know that they're having fun and they're excited about this upcoming school year. The bottom picture is um, our PE teachers. So every year we partner with the district, um, with different districts within Tulsa County, and we offer all of their PE teachers physical activity training. Our team has the privilege of going to different national trainings and learning lots of new games and activities. Um, I love it too when they when they when we learn about health education games that we can take back into the PE class. Those are things then that we take to do a professional development for teachers that aren't able to go to these national trainings. Um, so as you can see here is um, our PE teachers learning a different game. Our favorite thing is when we walk into a school and we go into the gym class and we see that PE teacher leading the game that we had taught them during a training um, and then getting feedback from them and them, them telling us, you know, our kids really love this or, or I modified this game to be a little bit different. Like we love it when teachers are taking what they're learning and they're modifying it to fit the needs of their students. That also gives us so many more ideas than to take to our next school, right? So again, this is employee wellness, um, doing professional developments, using the Move Spring app um, to track steps. And then also we do some nutrition education. Uh, lunch and learns is the other thing that we do. Those have been hit and miss, trying to find time for our teachers to actually meet with us to do a lunch and learn. Um, we've also done some make and takes to where they've you know, got to see a, a recipe see some different ideas and then they get to take it back. But, you know, teachers only have like 15 to 20 minutes to eat lunch. So we're trying to become a little bit more creative and innovative with how we can reach them um, with our nutrition information. Okay, before we go on to the next one, Thomas, thank you for sharing in the chat, um, SEL Resource Health Moves Minds program from SHAPE. Um, you can get access and register for free on this and it looks like the response um, from students and staff has been great. So thank you for sharing that resource as well. Okay, so we are now gonna talk about family engagement. So a lot of our schools will have a math and literacy night, a STEM night, a family fitness night, and they always ask if we can bring something and be a part of it. And so of course we are happy to be there. Um, you will see on the left, far left picture, um, we were doing an action-based learning um, night with our parent, with the parents and the students. They were going to get to see what the action-based learning equipment looks like that their students will be able to start using. And then um, we also encouraged all of them to try the, the equipment. So you see a parent who is also a teacher um, getting on this equipment and trying it out and trying to decide which, which one of these balance boards she likes best. Um, while her son is looking on, hoping that she does not fall. <laughs> um, then the other two are, as you can see, are our popular blender bike. Um, you can see in this picture um, that we how we kind of set it up. We have the recipe posted so that if parents want to take a picture of it, they can. We also provide the recipe in a card that they can take with them. And um, we also, we will see the students encouraging their parents because as Charlie mentioned, it is hard to pedal that thing. Um, and they will ask their parents, get on here, try it. Um, or it's exciting when a student is, it tells them that we've been in their class doing the blender bike and the smoothie tastes good. And you really have to try it, mom. You really have to try it. And so the parent who might be a little reluctant tries it um, and happens to enjoy it too. So it's always exciting to see that connection. Um, so as you can see here, um, we have the ingredients laid out of what's going to be in the smoothie or the salsa or the hummus. And so everything has to be measured out so we can practice math skills with those measurements with the students. Um, reading the recipe is part of that literacy part. 
and then using their bodies to make the blender mix up all of the ingredients to create their smoothie goes into some stem components. And so this is um, something we get asked to do all of the time with the blender bag. All right, now for community involvement. Um, the picture on the left is Bike Club. It started at one of our schools through a nonprofit called Humble and Sons. This um, nonprofit provided bikes and helmets to all the students in this program. This program grew as discussions were starting about safe routes to schools as well as active ways to get to schools. Um, the question was asked, why are kids not riding their bikes? Well, what they learned is that kids don't know how to ride a bike, even if they had one. So they started this after school at one school um, and ran it with local bicycling teams. And it soon was quickly a hit. And each year after that, they added more volunteers, which are bicycling teams around Tulsa County, who would have thought that we have so many bicyclists um, in this county. And then they also uh, partnered with more schools. Um, Yes, so now this bike club has continued to develop and they have curriculum, they have volunteer trainings that are hosted at some of our local breweries here in Tulsa. Um, and they've even partnered with the largest school district in Tulsa County to offer bicycling as a PE unit um, in all elementary schools. So all third through fifth grade students are gonna get this PE unit on bicycling. Um, one of the coolest things about this club is that every kid gets to go home with a bike and a helmet at the end of the year. The middle picture is the Tulsa Children's Museum um, or Discovery Lab. It's all about kids in the Discovery Lab. We wrote a grant to provide teachers in Tulsa County a free action-based learning STEM professional development that also included on-site health education and wellness classes for grades K through five and a field trip to the Discovery Lab. Teachers who attended the training, they went home with the materials they would need to facilitate all the lessons that were taught during that two-day training, plus they got free breakfast. So who wouldn't want to come to that, right? Giving them some free food. Um, the teachers love this training. They love having those resources. STEM has been pretty big in Oklahoma. So when we were able to have the opportunity to, to, to join STEM and action-based learning movement in the classroom, um, join with the, health, or with the Discovery Lab to do that, it was a win-win for us. Um, like Bridget has mentioned, the Tulsa Drillers, that local AA baseball team, Hornsby, the mascot, has helped us do so much in our schools, doing the assemblies, doing the Drillers um, game days, and also during the pandemic, helping us to film, you know, nutrition classes, hand washing classes, fitness videos. Our kids love to see um, the mascot and the drillers love to be able to give back to their school. So whenever we've been able to partner with them, um, it's been a great collaboration as we're both working together to help, you know, meet the needs of the students in our schools. Now, the bottom two, the, the left and right, bottom left and right logos are from the Oklahoma Tribal Nations. These tribal nations have a lot of different types of health education programming that they can offer to our schools and our community. Um, actually, we woke up Indian Healthcare Center, Muskogee Nation, Indian Healthcare Center, and it's all about kids we host a set less, move more, learn better, have fun, free workshop each year and a two day let's play workshop. This year we combine these workshops together to offer a virtual let's play more, set less, have fun. Um, that workshop's actually going on right now, today. We were able to host up to 500 participants on a Zoom platform. 400, 400 of the slots were dedicated to Oklahoma PE teachers public health agencies and tribal health programs. And a hundred of the slots were for PE teachers in North Carolina. Um, some of our presenters that are presenting today, they are from North Carolina. That's why we opened it up to some of their PE teachers as well. Um, what's so great about this training is we know that not all of our PE teachers are available today. And so they we are recording it and we're gonna be doing mini series of these professional developments using the videos from these presenters with some of our school districts during their um, PE professional developments this year. So we're excited to see how today's presentation goes and then how we're able to utilize this information with some of our schools that aren't able to attend the training. Okay, so we have talked a lot and given you a lot of information. So we kind of want to show you our team in action. So enjoy this video.
Sorry if that video was a little shaky for anyone else. Um, on my end, it looked a little shaky, but maybe, hopefully it looked good for you guys. If you want to check it out, it is on our YouTube channel, which you can find at TulsaPlay.org. All right, so in the chat, if you wouldn't mind telling us at least one potential community partner you want to collaborate this year, um, thinking about some of the different uh, partners that we shared that we've been working with, think about who maybe in your community you could reach out to that you haven't before. So if you want to just share that in the chat with us, um, that would be awesome. And while you guys are sharing that, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put those in the, the chat as well. I'm going to go ahead and move to the next slide so you guys can see our contact information. So if you have questions after um, our presentation today, you can feel free to email us, call us, um, follow us on our social media platforms. We're gonna be putting out some new content. Check out our website, um, give us feedback. We always love hearing feedback, how we can improve on things. So let us know, but um, if you have any questions, we wanna open it up to questions as well. So some of the potential places that you guys have talked about is grocery. So um, I'm interested, Kim, if you're willing to share with us what you mean by grocery, what you're thinking there. We also have local community college for in-classroom training partnerships with institutions of higher learning for greater collaboration. So we have a question from Ruth. How do you build the relationships with schools to actually work in the classrooms? What are the mechanics of the MOU? So our program started about 2004, and this is when the um, MOU started. We started meeting with district administrators um, to tell them about our program and what we could offer to schools, what we would be able to partner with them on. Um, and that's when the MOU process started. And luckily every year, it's a, it's a quick conversation. We've added to that um, memorandum of understanding, but I mean, it's, it's a pretty quick process now that we've already built those relationships with the administrators. That gives us the buy-in to go into any school within that district. So then we meet with we meet with the school administrators, and sometimes it's a teacher that has gone from one of our schools to another school that we haven't partnered with in the, the past. Um, that they talk about with their administrator how great it was to have us there. You know how they how we help them by providing resources or curriculum or even coming in doing like those one-off health education classes. So again, it's building the relationships with the schools, trying to, you know, obviously start from the top and work our way down. But sometimes it's been from um, the teacher's level and they're, they're taking it up to our administrators. When we started doing the professional developments with our schools, this is when we really started to build relationships, especially with the PE teachers. And we started taking health education into the PE classes to begin with. Um, once we did that, then we were able to start going into some of the classrooms and offering um, health education in the classrooms. And when the teacher saw that, you know, how the students were responding to us and how it was helpful to them, that's when they started asking us to come back more. Um, does that answer your guys' questions with that? Bridget, do you have anything you want to add on that? No, I think you did a good job with that. Um, if anybody else has any questions on that, please put it in the chat. I'm going to move on. So Kim answered saying she wanted free, healthy food. So I understand what you're saying. Um, we have, some of our schools have partnerships with our local grocery stores here in Tulsa. 
or even Walmart or Target, and they are able to get, um, like we've talked about, um, with for the nutrition items, um, they can get a they can get food donated for those things. If they have a community night, they can get food donated for that. Um, and then we have a question from Erica that says, "What is the best way to engage grocery stores and community collaboratives?" Um, I think just starting the conversation. Um, I know some of our grocery store resources here in Tulsa has um, had a program where they had dietitians on site that would actually help with um, grocery shopping. So if there is somebody in the community that needed that help, um, we actually collaborated with them with our dietitians. Um, and Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, where they were able to take students to do a grocery shopping tour and like actually go to the store and see what the grocery, like what it looks like to go grocery shopping. What is on your list? What are you going to make? How much is that going to cost? And so just having those conversations and saying, Hey, is there a way that we can, you know, a school is asking for this. Is there a way that we can partner to help this um, school out? And so I think just being open to and thinking outside the box um, to create those collaboratives. Um, okay, what's our next one? Oh, do you utilize an assessment with your schools or do they self select the sections they would like to work on? So we, um, thank you, Elizabeth, for that question. We actually um, have developed an assessment. We, um, we were able to go actually to an Asia conference a couple of years ago and see um, some presenters about creating assessments. And so we created an assessment for our program and it is built around the WISC model and the components. And so um, we work with the schools and they will let us know what areas they feel they need help with. And so that is where we can come along, provide that support and help them make sure that we can help implement that specific component and bring that to the table. Um, so they, they are self-selecting what they feel their school needs at that time. And some schools, they feel like it's the same thing each year that they need. And some schools, they want to try certain components. And then the next year, their, their goal is a few other components. And so um, we kind of work together and let the school guide. Um, and we are there as that support to actually implement that. I think we had a question that I might have missed. Am I out of time? Uh, go ahead and answer that last question, then we'll wrap up. Um, okay, I think there was one up here that we might have missed about from Roberto. Um, and so it was talking about health outcomes of the program um, and how are these measured. So um, we actually, with specific topics that our state requires data on, we have pre and post tests. Um, we will go in, do the education and it's knowledge base and um, looking at behavior. So we will have the students complete that assessment before we start our education and our programming. And then we come back 60 days later and have them complete the assessment again um, to see if there was any improvement in that knowledge and any habits. For example, when we do the blender bike in the gym class, did they take that smoothie home and were they able to try it with their family? Um, and so kind of what does that look like? Um, we also, with our after school programming with Cooking Club and with the It's All About Kinesthetics, again, we're trying to see um, with It's All About Kinesthetics, their overall improvement of their own personal goals um, with can, can they do a push up now and um, correctly and how many can they do? And um, so that's different ways that we evaluate that. And then we share that with our funders. Great. I want to thank both of you for taking the time and presenting today. You all are doing so many wonderful things, and it's really exciting to see all the different ways um, you're implementing the WISC model. So I just want to add that today, um, if you are needing CEUs, you can do that by completing the evaluation. I'm putting that in the chat right now, but just to let you all know, there will be a follow-up email within the next um, 24 hours that will include the evaluation, as well as today's uh, recorded webinar slides and any other resources um, that we would like to share. 
Also, we still have a few more webinars scheduled for this year, so check out our website. And um, I'm not sure if the registration links are up yet, but they should be up shortly so you can get registered for those. And as always, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks again, everyone.